On board as well, Robert Weiner, Democratic strategist, columnist, and former communications director for Clinton Drug Czar General Barry McCaffrey. He's also former chief of staff for the House Committee on Aging. Bob, good to have you as well. It's a pleasure, and I, I love how Putin's people said to are trying to say now that this guy was dangerous, and we told you, except that when he went back to Russia, right before he came back here, they did nothing like arrest him or do anything about him. Now, according to the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, Title 50, U.S. Code, Chapter 36, it goes through a number of explanations, but it refers to the categorizing of people and what, what sort of column they might fall in as it relates to uh, rights of redress. And they say that, quote, an agent of a foreign power is anyone, citizen or otherwise, okay, an agent of a foreign power is anyone, citizen or otherwise, who knowingly engages in sabotage or in ter international terrorism or activities that are in preparation, therefore, for or on behalf of a foreign power. Is Congressman Peter King all that wrong in what he insists on? Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to use some language that I think is going to be okay on this show, but I think the reaction of most Americans to this guy is, screw those schmucks. Uh, I think that, uh, it, you know, I don't really care how we get them. I think, though, Dianne Feinstein is right. The best way to get them is through the civilian process. We uh, look at Guantanamo. How is, wait, wait, how is that possible if, if the first words uh, that they hear are, you have the right to remain silent? How, we've done real well with the 160 that are dangling in Guantanamo, as someone pointed out on the Sunday shows. We're not doing real well with our military process, but as Jay Carney pointed out today in the briefing, we got the Times Square bomber, we got uh, the uh, so-called underwear bomber, we got the Somali national, we got, you know, we got every single one that we went after in civilian court, we get. We don't get the But Bob, that's not the only measure. Bob, that's Bob, but Bob, that's not the only measure. Getting that one person... No, but it's not the primary measure. The primary measure is a little more all-inclusive, and that is how many more can we get before they harm us? Well, we're not losing any intel by going through the civilian process with this guy. We would get more intel, I mean, assuming we get any at all. We would get more in the military process. You just made that up. I mean, you made it up. It's just simply not oh, true. Yeah. We haven't gotten yeah. any more in the military. The Guantanamo people are going on hunger strikes. We're not getting any more. Had you read him as Miranda Wright, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed would not have been anywhere near as forthcoming, or are you going to walk on the precipice of non-believability and assert otherwise? You really think the FBI and American law enforcement don't know how to shake people down after they read them this token thing that, they, that, that is completely ignored anyway because it doesn't mean that much? You really think that that, that means that much? Token think, thing that doesn't we mean that much? don't want to symbols of democracy for these guys. That's... And he says the elder brother of the Boston bombing suspects had a deep fascination for jihadist websites. Now, if that's the case, then doesn't that scream a couple of questions? Because assuming the FBI really thought Tomorrowland had nothing suspicious about which to worry when the, the Russians intelligence service, FC, FSB, said, hey, you may want to look at this guy, if they really thought he had a clean bill of health, then why would they put a hold on his citizenship application while granting it to his younger brother, the one who's currently in the hospital. And Robert Weiner, Democratic strategist, columnist, and former communications director for Clinton Drug Czar General Barry McCaffrey, former chief of staff of the House Committee on Aging. By the way, Bob was also, um, he's also a former uh, communications director for Messrs. Rangel and Conyers, Congressman Rangel and Conyers of uh, New York and Michigan, respectively. Bob, good to have you back as well. You too. And to answer your question, how closely do you want in this country to have everybody watched who has any suspicions but is guilty of nothing yet? That's a serious question. Why is it that if the FBI really thought Tomorrowland had nothing suspicious about which to worry, why would they put a hold on his citizenship application while granting, to its, while granting it to his younger brother, Bob? Well, it's a legitimate question. It still is a, bring, begs the question of what would you have had them do with this guy, track him with a, an assigned person? Well, I'm saying that it I mean, seems that enough question. was – Where do we go with this? Uh, I, I think if we respond to the first one, if there are protocols in place and there are already enough grounds on which to base a suspicion – then that's the only measure of the dialogue that should be preoccupied. Well, I asked the question and nobody is answering, but I guess there is no answer to it about what you do about a guy that you're suspicious of. 
if you're suspicious with grounds, then there are a whole host of procedures uh, that can be utilized. Yeah, and what are they? Well, then they, they, you become a person of interest, and that launches an investigation. Yeah. And then you do put things like holds on citizenship applications. Amy, right. what am I missing? Well, that's, that's not the question, Alan. That's not the question. The question is, should they have tracked this guy, and was there a way to prevent what he did in Boston? Well, Amy, go ahead. You can't follow everyone because that's there's right. the money or the manpower. But you could, if you have a reason to do so, you can deport him. Or you can follow him around because you've decided he's a high enough priority target. The seeing who he's talking to is worth it in terms of defeating a larger plot. Those are really your choices. They yeah. probably, but I don't know this for a fact, they probably decided they didn't have enough evidence that he was really up to anything. Right. They weren't sure enough to, re- to recommend that he could become a citizen. And that's probably where it was left. And I don't think we can really blame them. They have to make these kinds of judgments right. because there aren't enough of them. That's where I'm going, and I, I think you have an agreement on that point, that they, they, they put him under suspicion, they block his citizenship, but they don't follow him around with a dog. I, I think you can't go that route. Enter the bipartisan gang of aid who have figured out a way to significantly shrink the hemorrhaging traffic while providing to illegal residents a strong enough motive to come forth and reveal their identities for the record. I think it's a refreshing compromise, delivering unambiguous toughness at the borders while enhancing our national security through non-xenophobic means. What say you to this, Amy Ridenauer? Well, you know, if, if they pass this, you have to make sure that the deliverables are actually delivered. And that was the problem in 86, and I think it'll be the problem again. And I think what the Democrats will try to do, and maybe John McCain with them, is to say something like the administration will verify or will make an announcement as to when the border is secure, and that will be enough to kick in other procedures. And this administration has is, is already been saying that the border is secure, so that won't be anything for them. So that's what I think is going to happen. I, I agree. The certifications are weak like they are with drug uh, following. Also, the 10 years can be expanded to 12 years. There is a compromise to be made in view of the Sarnoff's uh, discovery.